What's up, Aaron? How are you today? Hey, good. Good, thanks. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, all, all smooth. Got my coffee, ready for a little peer review session here. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for, thanks for taking the time. I was I was surprised, pleasantly surprised. You see, you checked out the whole video uh, with the sound urchin that sound, Simon and I made. Oh, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed watching that. Yeah, that yeah, was good. That was that fun. Was good. Yeah, and what we're going to do now is just kind of investigate, dissect, as you've been saying, the sound okay. urchin just a little bit more. There are a few little bits which I thought might be fun to kind of go, yeah, go over when I was kind of watching watching you both building it and everything. So, um, totally, yeah, yeah. and I, I love that because, wow, I just let it rip. I mean, just live in one take. And I think Simon did the same, and it ended yeah, up yeah. blowing up to this hour long video nearly, but when that was totally not what we intended. But it's good because I think there are some. Simon caught a few of my blunders and i think there's a few other things where you're like yeah let's let's dig in there a let's little bit and in. actually see what's happening which is always very cool so yeah that's what we're going to do uh, basically kind of look at the part up to where i send it to simon yeah possibly some trouble areas or we just want to investigate and see what's actually happening i should i should preface this by saying that it sounds great i think the sound is really really cool and these things that kind of like I was noticing the things that were occurring to me. We may completely break and destroy the sound in trying to <laughs> look yeah. at any of these things, well, but they might still be fun to kind of go over anyway. Yeah, like yeah. I said, well, let's work on a copy. I mean, we can kind of do an A B. You know, sometimes yeah, some yeah, subversive mindset or breaking the rules or doing things wrong can actually creatively lead to some nice stuff. But in any case, it'd be cool to to hear a difference. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll 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 yeah, get going. Let's jump in here. Yeah. Let's jump in. So here's here's the sound that you sent me. Now, if I remember right, this was the first version of your sound, and then you you made it so that we didn't have to have the urchin that we could work off a disc file, and then this right. is the one that Simon then edited, right? So cool. this is so this one's still quite sort of fairly fairly simple, but it has has the recording input which will be useful. So I'll make a copy of this. So yeah, like you say, we can. Uh, um, do a kind of A, B, we'll call this one B. <laughs> so we can see if we actually make it worse in this process or not, which could well happen. But I just thought I'd go through a couple of things that I thought might be interesting to have it to kind of a look at. So, um, so one thing I noticed, let me just try and find my way around the sound again, is you were modified. So you got the sound coming here from the sound urchin doing some mm -hmm. amplitude following of it, also recording it into this kind of, um, uh, you, where you're recording it here into the memory writers and then playing it back here out of these grain, they're sample clouds, aren't they? Yeah, sample cloud um, players and here. And oscillator at the top as well. Oh, and then there's these two oscillators, you're right. So this is wavetable oscillator, which is being written into by the sound itself, and then you're playing it back and the sine wave oscillator, which you're using for ring modding the original signal. And both these two oscillators have their frequencies being set by the amplitude follower. I think I've got that. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I wanted to kind of draw attention to is that the, actually, let's, let's do this one first, it's easier. The frequency field here, um, in the oscillator is like a boiling hot parameter, uh, which means it can take a capi talk expression or it can take a sound at mm -hmm. full audio rate. So what what's going on here is we're taking the output from the amplitude follower, which is this signal that's going to set the frequency. We're downsampling it with this with the L message to capi talk rate which now turns it into a small number in the capital range. So like, you know, the in the audio range, everything's got a range of minus one to plus one. Um, and so we've just downsampled it to a small number in the range of zero to one uh, for the amplitude follower. And then we're converting that back to Hertz using the signal to Hertz thing. Um, so that's all happening at capital rate, which will have a certain sort of graininess to it. Uh, which might be really good and I might just destroy everything. But it's sort of not necessary because if we delete the signal to Hertz conversion and the down sampling, that's effectively the equivalent 
that's going to have the same frequency range because if the oscillator sees a sound pasted into the frequency, it's assuming it's in that signal to hertz mm -hmm. sort of encoding. So, uh, so now we, we should have exactly the same frequencies, but it should be smoother because it's not being down, down sampled to capi talk rate. This will be at full. We can AB rate. that right now, couldn't we? So yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah. Part of it. it might be nice because there's so much other stuff happening that we take it in. So can you hear that all right? Is that coming through? I, I can't hear anything. <laughs> okay, so. All right, yeah, so maybe let's hear just the ring mod A and B. Here we are back again, see if you can hear a difference. So we are in, here's the new version. Okay, and let's compare that. It's a down sample. There, didn't didn't you hear a difference there? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're monitoring before, are you monitoring before the data compression? Like I'm getting, a, we're going to be getting a different feed on this end because it's going through Zoom. Right? Yeah, it's going through Zoom. Yeah. To, me, to me, but nevertheless, yeah, definitely. It was, uh, it was on that high thick, that high sort of peak. Yeah. On the other yeah. one, it went Meow, with the smooth one and this one went Meow. Yeah. It's not to say necessarily one's better or not, but that's yeah. But it's it's different. Going. It's yes. worth noting that there's a difference. Yeah. All right. So the next one is well, the same thing's going on in here where mm. you can, you're using the amplitude follower plus oh, I see plus a random amount times a thousand. So that's presumably a thousand hertz. So we could sort of do the same trick there so the first so first of all what we could do is we could just put a mixer in to um add in this random bit so we can sort of do it in the sample rate thing so i'll just put a constant into the mixer and we'll put that expression Here, and we want so that's going to be times a thousand. Now we'll come back to that number in a second, but so mm. this is the kind of random uh, frequency fluctuation. Fluctuation. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And that's so we're adding that into the original signal and coming out here. So now we can take that mixed signal, delete all this. Um, and that's now, oops, <laughs> don't delete that last bit. Uh, that's now sort of happening at sample rate. Now, the you want a thousand hertz. Now, the um, uh the the signal mapping when you map a frequency to the signal uh actually no that's fine what am i saying this is easy you just go um hertz to signal that's all you need to do then that's going to convert it to the signal level right. if it's because you can't put the number a thousand into the audio channel it's too big so that mm. does that conversion so that will so this should now work the same as it did before but now at audio rate should we see if that sounds any different yeah i think so is ah so now this is because that's written from live input so we need to we have to play the whole sound to hear this because this is being read here 
I mean, unless actually, I tell you what we do. We can make another mixer. Put it there. Put that wavetable into the mixer. Um, and delete it out of this one. Yeah. So we've now got this point. So we should be able to run the sound from here, shouldn't we? Yep. Cool. So that's that conversion. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hear the Do you want to hear the comparison? Yeah. Should we go to the other yeah. one and make the same change? Well, make yeah, the, I think so. These A B's yeah. and that's what it, the other one stuff fresh. Cool. So we'll just put a mixer in the where put it there. Put the wavetable into the mixer. Take out that mixer, and we can run the sound from here. It sounded. I think it sounds a bit different to me. Yeah, it's, it's quite it's, subtle, actually. It's just, that's a lot of, lot of bias. It reminds me of like a being preamps. You know, you're like lost. <laughs> yeah. You know, is there a half dB? You know, or something. It's cool. I mean, it's, it's a tough environment over the internet like this to be, to be mm. sure. But yeah, maybe it'll it will, as all the if these are more subtle, as it keeps going, it's going to build up. So by the time we play the whole thing, we should, we should hear a pretty. Yeah, then then or maybe it'll sound exactly the same, and all this would have been. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> well, let's find out. Place your bets. <laughs> it's interesting. So, great. The next thing to have a look yeah, at, I think. We're going to have a look in the amplitude follower. Is now a good time for that? Now is an excellent time for the amplitude follower. So the amplitude follower is driving this kind of frequency. Um, now the as well as other parameters too. As That's well as other parameters, cool. yeah. So yeah. the um first thing is to I'm gonna bung a, a sound global controller just on here so we can have a look at the output so we'll just call this yeah because the, one of the main concerns here was that the the amplitude follower probably never returns to zero right well a, comp, comp, a couple of things the amplitude follower is very quiet I think often for an input signal um mm -hmm. So we so we're just going to use the sound global controller a bit like a really See what blunt. We're actually getting. Yeah, like a really blunt oscilloscope. We're just going to have a, a look at a mm -hmm. fader on the screen. So what you can do with a sound global controller is if you take the L off, because you notice that this value field is also on an orange background, so you can paste the sound straight in. If you put a sound straight in without the L and uncheck silent, then it will just sit on the line without affecting it. It will pass the signal straight through, but sort of take a tap off to show you on the screen. So you can sort of do that without interrupting the sound. Um, so this is our kind of debug for the um, follower. But let's have something to compare it to. So if we um, put the same thing on the actual live source itself. And again, we'll just take the L off and take silent off. So it should sort of just sit there kind of um, silently. I'll just run it from here. So you can kind of see. I mean, theoretically, those should be the same, right? And following and live. Well, they they should should be well, not not kind of really but i mean amp follow is a smoothed out version and it's sort of looking more I see. the amplitude rather than the kind of peak level so it it doesn't follow the peak as well. I mean, in any case it is small i mean it's looking but it looks yeah I mean, I mean, that's something like times 10 to the minus four, you know, so it's only just getting to like a thousand 
Yeah, I mean, we're tens, hundreds, thousands of a decimal. Yeah. Uh, to the ten thousands. Yeah. So it's pretty okay. small. So, so, you, it's, so this it's, one it's peaks. small but... when you think, figure. So the uh, up to one, yeah, it's, it's a small value. Yeah. Yeah, so even if this sounds quite loud, this thing isn't really getting very big at all. Even, yeah, even at those, those peaks. Really tiny in the place. Got it. Um, mm -hmm. But what we could compare, well, which, but what's interesting is that the, the signal, when you, when you put frequency into, when you were using that signal, the audio kind of signal to drive the frequency like we are here mm -hmm. uh, in the frequency field, a zero in that signal m means zero hertz. So like no frequency at all. But a one means half sample rate. So depending on what, sample frequency right. you're running yeah, you at. Have, what are you at 48 I'm, I'm, i think i'm at 48 yeah so that's like yeah. you know that's ultrasonic you're talking at twenty four thousand hertz and it's kind of linear spacing you know so halfway would be twelve thousand hertz half of that would be six thousand hertz and so on so it's not pitch spacing it's linear frequency spacing um on that and so that's really sensitive do you know what i mean like if, if you if you just went up yeah. by 0 0.5 you're like <laughs> you're up to yeah. you're up to like twelve thousand hertz already yeah. um if you go past 0 0.5 you, you probably won't even hear it it'll be like so mad so the fact mm -hmm. that this amp follower is actually really kind of you know down at the thousandths um is pretty good for pitch um, actually it's kind yeah. of fine which i mean because the pitch is varying wildly as we can hear right um but the amp follower is kind of doing doing kind of fine there but if we bear that in mind when we look at where is it it's like in the it's over there in uh yeah. a few places freak jitter and yeah. grain duration so like in grain duration the you know we're, we're probably assuming that the amplitude follower has a range of nearly up to one or something but it kind of really doesn't uh, yeah, so exactly. this this number is going to be down at the very small number, you know, right. 5,000. It's occasionally peaking a bit, but that's going to be really low. And yeah. the same with the freak jitter. That's going to be, well, it's going to be quite a lot of freak jitter because it's one minus the amplitude follower, and that's never really going to be very high. Mm -hmm. So so, the, so it, this could sound quite different if we did something else here. So one thing you could do is if you want to still go for a kind of amplitude is you can gain the amplitude follower. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I tend to do a lot is use the peak follower, which is much more sensitive because it's, it sort of literally follows the peaks. Um, uh, and sometimes that's kind of more what you, it depends what you're kind of looking for, but sometimes the peak follower Let's can sound. Let's yeah. see, can we, can we see the output of the peak follower? Absolutely. It's the same thing with the sound of globals. Yeah. Well, let's just bung. I'll just bung it here for now. Yeah. There you go. And then you can just kind of compare it. We'll make this one silent so we don't pass it on. Um, this will be our debug peak follower. And we'll put the uh, peak. I think it's called peak detector, isn't it? I keep calling it follower, but it's the peak detector. Um, Oh, not peak following. Yeah. yeah, so ignore all of that. And the, so you're using. Well, yeah, that's is, what was in there. Yeah, so we could, we could use the same number just so you get a good um, comparison. So the P detector has a kind of attack and release time. Um, let's have a look at that. So here's the peak follower. Can you quickly debug? Yeah, it seems a, seems a bit hotter, though still small, huh? It's, it's a lot hotter, yes, than the amp follower. I mean, it's quite low signal, but you can kind of see it how it's, sort of quite, it's a lot more sort of reactive. Um, I bet it would be e easier to see if you change the range of those faders, huh? But we can make these too. We could, uh... Yeah, just I mean, since then, none of them are getting anywhere near.
yeah but it's quite a quiet input signal to be fair so um there you go there you go but it's a bit it is it is kind of more reactive and louder than the amp follower <laughs> kind of reaching levels that are comparable to what the live input is sort of reaching mm. in a sense. I mean, as it should, because it's the peak follower that's literally following the peaks with just a little bit of smoothing out there. A peak detector. 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 All right, so let's uh, let's plunk that in. So you can plunk this in instead. Right. used in both, isn't it? There you go. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to hear that? We do, but are, do we, we still have the amplitude follower going into the ring mod? And we're going to hear everything, aren't we? Do we want to put it in? Or do you want to just hear the um, just hear the grain cloud? I suppose I suppose we do. If it's, yeah, what do you will. think? Yeah, sure. No, look. If we put a mix another mixer in, we'll then have these three different places that we can. Um, so I'm kind of ruining the lovely layout of your. Beautiful sound. Oh, no, this, is, this is part of the dissection process. It looks so neat and tidy when you gave it to me. I've thrown all the pieces all over the floor. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be worth it. <laughs> uh, oh, is that it then? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, we've got this point now, this here. So this is your, this is the grain cloud mix there. That's the ring mod. And then this is the, um, right. So yeah, let's the other thing. just hear the grains. That's the wave table, isn't it? Okay. So we can now hear the grains by themselves. So I think I'm hearing more sort of variation in pitch. Yeah, I thought I was too. Definitely um, longer variation. In the freak jitter, at least on the left channel. Yeah, so left and right should be different opposites. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it was the right channel where it's. Um, yeah. So I was definitely hearing a bit more variation. I think definitely I say, and then we'll do an A, B, and then you know, it'll sound the same. It'll look foolish. So. What we need to do is a blind. Blind. <laughs> Can you guess which one I'm playing? Sure, I'll make the same change here. This is, this is kind of a an interesting exercise in like adding extra mixes in so that you have um, yeah the different paths along the yeah places where you can yeah. kind of play the sound from. Which kind of I think it's actually really helpful because yeah if you wanted to part it out to hear a certain section this is how you one way you'd want to do it yeah yeah this is kind of quite a nice nice way of doing that so we can play that Longer than I there was longer grain durations in there than I, I thought. I don't know. Now I'm not I'm not so sure, but it, I mean it makes sense that it Yeah, um, there, there should be more in this version, but you know <laughs> in theory. Well, we'll, we'll do a, was that what else was there? 
So another couple of things. So oh, the you, triggering, right? Yeah. So you notice on the amplitude follow that it didn't go very high, but it also, with an analog input, you wouldn't expect it ever to go really to zero, to zero, yeah, you know, proper yeah, proper it's zero. Not, it's not small. Yeah. But not not zero. Not zero. Which is important because to re-trigger, you got to go go to zero. You need to go to zero. So th yeah, this random thing will only re-trigger if this goes to zero and then comes back up again. Which is what we're talking about is triggering triggering to write the wave table, right? For specifically yeah. now in the wavetable oscillator. Yes. Uh, actually, no, this one is just adding the random variation. Uh, but you're right, it's also used here in this trigger as well. Mm. Mm. Now this one is yeah basically anywhere there's a trigger it's not getting re-triggered. It's not getting re-triggered. So this yeah, one's well. at capital rate, um, which means capital is kind of kind of going to sample the input every thousand hertz, mm. you know, every thousand for the second. Um, and this is an audio signal. So even if we make it go to zero, it's like it might catch it, it might not. But this is a random process, so maybe that's fine. Maybe that's kind of cool. Uh, it might not reset to zero, but it might. It just depends on whether it, when it samples, whether it catches it as zero or not. But we need to force this to a zero. So one way we can do that is with the threshold. Um, there. Like so, so we can say only when it's above a threshold do you give a one. Now this has got hysteresis built in. Yeah, we could just leave that in there. Because the threshold is either one or a zero, or it is either a one or a zero. But seeing as we're using it for a trigger, that's fine. We don't. Yeah, exactly. We, so we it's just right. once the threshold's breached, it outputs a one. If it's not breached, it's a zero. Yeah. Um, so if we want to keep these little debuggy things in. Um, this one's on the wrong side of the threshold, so I'll put another one in here. Copy all of the uh, gubbins across. Actually, that's going to uh, just I have there. So, th so this is the that's the amp follower output, but this one is now the um, threshold output, which you should see leap up to one and, uh, and pass that on there. So if we just run this bit here, Yeah, this is from two C go there. Yep, so it's one, yeah. and out of zero. There it goes. Mm -hmm. so, so that should be enough to trigger that random pitch fluctuate or yep. frequency fluctuation. This, this one, this one. Um and you can see the threshold set really low, but that seems to be working. <laughs> as it is. So we can use that same threshold there. See, that's a silent, but an audio rate. Yeah, so we could use this. Actually, might as well take it here. Take it from there. And we can also plug that into the wavetable in the trigger. And here we don't need the L. Again, we can just use the audio lose it. Yeah. Right thing there. And that should trigger every time the threshold goes over. Um, so I don't think that wavetable was being written more than once because i think that the amplitude follower would go over yeah. right at the start of the sound right which the should point, yeah. should trigger a single writing into the wavetable yeah but then maybe not again so where do you actually where should we run it from we can run it from the wavetable that way yeah so every time we see the threshold go up we should get a new wavetable recording possibly even more frequently that because <laughs> And it, what you do is you're writing into a wavetable called wavetable, 
which is 4096 samples long. So if you want to have a little look at what that looks like, we can put a scope on. Mm, yes. Just now it's getting serious. <laughs> and uh, oh, Scopey, where are you? There you are. Um, and we could, I was going to read it out of a wave table. Actually, you could just use an oscillator here, to be fair. So we'll just call that wave table and say it's coming out of a memory writer. Set it to 4096 sound long. Um, if we set the scope to 4096 SAMP, um, long as well, they'll stay pretty much in sync. And if you want to be really precise about it, don't use linear interpolation. Um, and that should give us a live sort of view of what's currently in the buffer. I like it. I like it. Uh, the threshold so And you can hear it actually, you can hear it ticking now. It is different. That's kind of cool. That is cool. That's quite yeah. good. Yeah, that's I like this sound. Being able to see it there too is useful. Oh, I'll tell you the other thing. I don't think I made the scope silent. So. <laughs> We were hearing the scope output as well, which was mm. not super scientific. So you, you could then work on the, um, yeah, that would make it sound grainier, actually. Uh, run it from there. There's nothing in it. There, there we go. The other thing is your wavetable cyclic yes ah so the whole time we're above the threshold you're writing into a cyclic buffer you might want to take cyclic off because what will happen then is even yeah, if the threshold whole... stays high it's only going to run one cycle yeah there's a lot of changes happening yeah so instead of seeing this kind of live um you know, this kind of constant changing of the waveform. You should say the sample one. Ooh. Yeah. This just captured that and then held it, which is kind of nice. Um, and you could work on the input or output from threshold if you didn't want to re-trigger this too often. You could kind of, um, like on the amplitude yeah. follower, you could play with the slew rate and so on, which would stop threshold triggering really, really quickly. Um, if you wanted so you to, would, would you you'd still keep using this amplitude follower in conjunction with the peak detector, or would you lose the amplitude follower altogether and put the peak de peak detector well, instead? Of I think one of the most characteristic aspects of the sound is the pitch wobble that you've got, you know, the sound. And that's being created by the amplitude follower into this ring mod and into the wavetable yeah. frequency. Mm -hmm. So if we replace it with a peak detector, it's going to sound pretty different, um, so I think. So in conjunction or in different areas. So, and I think that's a really cool part of the sound. So I didn't want to, you know, just leave it because that okay. bit works. Uh, Having yeah. said that, we could, we could try a, a C version where we do exactly that. We um, replace the um, amplitude follower with the peak detector in there. And where's the other one? And in, no, not the, in the, oh no, that's the mix, isn't it? So 
mix, yeah, replace it in the mix instead of the amplitude follower. So we're only using the amplitude follower now for the threshold. And uh, yeah, I don't hear what that sounds like. Quite a bit different, didn't it? I think, yeah, I, I like the amplitude follower version on the pitch or frequency yeah. better. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, without listening to it for a while, it's hard to sort of completely say, yeah, but, yeah, yeah I um, think so. but that feels like it's just getting more wild and just getting more white noisy. Um, mm -hmm. the amplitude follower had a kind of more smoothy, sloppy kind of sound to it, so mm -hmm. let's abandon C. <laughs> You're right, back to B. Back to B. So uh, I think that was it. Yeah. So we put a threshold on the uh, amplitude follower. So that's making it properly trigger the wavetable right and the random fluctuation. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything else? Ring mod, ring tones. Yeah, check them. Um, that was. Yeah, I think I think that was things we were talking about. Yeah, I mean the other thing. Is is this um the oh, no. oh okay no that's cool yeah yeah so it is stereo so you've got a stereo signal coming in here uh, it's really yeah. the same signals going to both left and right but then the processing on the left and right is yeah different. it's different. And you got left and right. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that looks good. Well, shall we hear the final output between the two? Yep, yeah, here it goes. Oh, it's the, the final biggie. A B. Should we go for A first to yeah. remind ourselves? The original sound and then the change one. I'll tell you what we should do for this original. I'll put on um I'll turn on the high quality sound. Then mm. you'll be able to hear it in stereo. No, there were there's I didn't know there were settings for that. There's settings for that in Zoom? Yep. So yeah, this should sound different. Tell me if this sounds more stereo to you. Yeah, your voice already sounds different. I can hear I can hear a difference from the so you turned on stereo sound, is that what you did? I've turned on original mm -hmm. sound which turns off Zoom's echo cancellation, so it makes it stereo, but also you're hearing the output sort of straight from Kima, not through the Zoom echo cancellation filter, blah blah blah. Ah, I see. But um if I wasn't wearing headphones, you'd be hearing yourself back through the microphone and all sorts of garbage. Anyway, so that was A. Keep that in your head. We'll now try B.
do you reckon? There's definitely a difference. And I notice it, I think, on the wavetable part that because mm. that's changing. And then we're getting like that point, point there at the end where it's, it's clipping. And that's becoming our wavetable, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's there's there's more uh, abrupt changes in there because we're hearing those different wavetables come through. Whereas in mine, it's just like that probably that initial thing, which is almost nothing triggering it. Yeah, I think, or, or it's just constantly triggering, I think. Because you had a cyclic it, wave, you had this on cycle. Right, but doesn't it, in mine, it never returns to zero to re-trigger. No, but if it goes up and stays high, it's then constantly it just keeps triggered. Going. Then it's just like, it's basically a 4096 sample delay. If you hmm. zero, because it's going to be coming out of the wavetable and it's just going to be constantly writing in. Um which would have contributed to a di you know quite a different sound um probably doing something you know might might not have been what you imagined it was doing but it's not it's not to say it sounds worse i, I have no but, doubt yeah i mean it, i uh, i just press buttons you know i just <laughs> i don't know how any of this works i mean i just uh yeah i just have fun no i mean it's it's cool to dig in a little bit more i mean definitely a useful thing i mean i'm definitely going to take some some stuff away from this not only for this sound but also for future ones and i guess it's uh makes sense when you grab the amplitude follower like from the prototypes they have there is a level after it like bringing this it up there's a gain of 20 times that comes yeah, with it oh yeah so in, in, in the prototypes I have, yeah i i lost that maybe maybe we want it back but yeah, I, I, they're quite different the peak detector and the amplitude follower i think the amplitude follower does i mean it um i don't know they're different. <laughs> it's quieter, but it's different. I think it is trying to get more of the amplitude rather than just obviously following the peak of the wave. Um, and it just depends what you're trying to do, which one you like. But yeah. Uh, yeah. but with the amplitude yeah. follower, I find I have to gain it up or set thresholds really, really low to kind of use mm -hmm. its, use its mm -hmm. output. Yep. Um, yeah. That was that was that was fun, you know. And then, like you yeah, say, I mean, you... thanks for the time and thanks for the thanks for the interest. Uh, for... I, well, I don't know if we've we've made it any better, but it was it's there are kind of a few sort of fun little um, aspects yeah. of chemo that like, I thought was worth looking at. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, all again hard to tell coming through Zoom on some of it, so do it here, and then it might be cool to go to the next step and integrate that with what Simon had done. Yeah, and things. yeah, and then see what it's yeah. like to perform see if it's any any different yeah yeah definitely i need to figure a way i mean i usually don't say attenuate but this sound urchin is just the output is just outrageous yeah <laughs> i mean it, it really is uh so yeah anyway that's a cool it's a cool thing yeah. it is fun yeah and it, it just begs for processing like this and came on its own it's it looks cooler i mean it's a, got the piezo I was mm. like element in there so it picks up all these vibrations and all which is neat but it's once it goes through some granulation or delay or some effects that it's like whoa it really really comes to life yeah yeah, yeah. so oh cool well, well thanks thanks for letting me, thanks for doing your video and thanks for letting me uh you. have a play with your sound that was for the peer review yeah. yeah yeah let's do it again you know it's all about and hopefully some people can take some stuff away from this and then we don't we're gonna all the steps are there yeah the yeah so you can build, but, yeah yeah right do on do this yourself well, yeah yeah nice i can hour. see you well hey no worries you too see you for the next one. yep <laughs> see you soon yep. Yep.